Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining. And also thanks very much to ISNTD for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to present. So I'm Pietje Hoekstra. I'm a PhD student at the Leiden University Medical Center in the Netherlands. And today I'll be talking about uh, our repeated Prasicontel treatment trial in Cote d'Ivoire. And in more, uh, more specifically, I'll be talking about Schistosoma X, uh, circulating antigens and DNA, and what do they reveal uh, after treatment. So as, uh, as Jessica also indicated uh, in her, her presentation, schistosomiasis remains a major public health problem. Um, we do have praziquantel treatment, um, and it's usually uh, given in the form of preventive chemotherapy as, as part of mass drug administration campaigns. Um, and in this, uh, in our trial, we specifically looked at praziquantel and its efficacy. So we were interested in, in curates. So in this uh, little table, you can see an overview of the reported cure rates of Prasicontel for Schistosoma mensonii. Uh, after one dose of Prasicontel, it, it ranges between 42 and 79 percent, while for Schistosoma hematobium, it ranges between 37 and 93 percent. And if you increase the number of doses, so if you give two Prasicontel treatments, the cure rate can be increased up to uh, 99 percent in case of Schistosoma hematobium and 93 percent in case of Schistosoma mensonii. However, these cure rates are determined uh, by using a classical micro microscopy. So urine filtration for hematobium or um, cut cuts for schistosoma mensonii. And we believe that these cure rates are overestimated if you use this classical microscopy. Um, it's known that microscopy can lack sensitivity, um, especially in case of low intensity infections or post-treatment uh, measuring. And this then leads to a higher number of false negatives which then also automatically leads to a high cure rate, which is actually incorrect if you have these false negatives. So this is more or less the rationale for our uh, REPS, our repeated uh, schistosomiasis treatment trial, in which we wanted to uh, to determine the efficacy of repeated Pazicontel treatments against schistosoma mensonii. On the one hand, using uh, still using classical microscopy, so cuts, but also on the other hand, uh, using more sensitive antigen and DNA detection methods. And we performed a clinical trial, a randomized clinical trial in Cote d'Ivoire in school-aged children. Um, they were screened uh, for schistosoma mensonii infection based on cuts and POCCCA. And if they were positive in both tests, they were included in the trial. Um, and they were randomly assigned to either the standard treatment group uh, receiving only one Prasicontel treatment or the intense treatment group receiving four Prasicontel treatments um, at two week intervals. And in this, this little overview, you can see the, the design of the study. Um, but if you want to uh, know more details, then please uh, have a look at the published study protocol because I do not have time to go into all the details. Um, we collected several, uh, at, at several time points, we collected samples. Um, all stool samples were subjected to cut cuts in the field. Uh, and afterwards, uh, PCR analysis was done in Leiden. Um, and for the urine samples, POC CCA was performed in the field and CAA analysis was done in Leiden. And I'll just jump to the results uh, now. So when we look at the cure rate, um, first starting with the classical microscopy data, uh, the cato cuts, you can see that in both groups, um, there is a, a major decrease in the, in the total number of positives from uh, after one treatment to uh, less than 25% positive. And this number increases again if no further treatment is given. While if you, if you add, uh, if you give more Prasicontel treatments, uh, the total number of positives uh, reduces further in the intense treatment group. And we calculated the cure rate based on the prevalence uh, four weeks after treatment compared to the prevalence uh, at baseline. And this resulted in a cure rate of 68% for the standard treatment group compared to 86% in the intense treatment group. Then if you add uh, the POC CCA data to that, um, we could see that um, this is quite different pattern. Um, a lot of the children remained positive by POC CCA over time. And also there was not a, a major or significant difference between uh, one treatment or four prosecutorial treatments. 
um, leading to a poor cure rate of uh, 30, 31% in the standard group and 36% in the intense treatment group. So when these data already have been published, uh, and now uh, I would like to add some preliminary data on, on CAA and the stool PCR. So first of all, the CAA data um, more or less confirmed the POC CCA data. So also here, uh, the majority of the children remained positive over time even after four treatments, and actually no difference between the two groups was observed. And the cure rate was even lower than POC CCA, 23% in the standard treatment group compared to 20% in the intense treatment group. And then looking at the stool PCR data, we actually could see a similar pattern to the to the Katokats data. So first a decrease in the number of positives, um, and then more or less an increase again if you do not treat and a further decrease in number of positive if you give additional treatments, leading to a cure rate of 48% in the standard treatment group and 78% in the intense treatment group. So in addition to cure rate, um, we were also very, very interested in reduction rate. So looking at the intensity of infection to see um, whether we could also observe a difference between these uh, four diagnostic methods. So here we are looking at the cut cuts data. We can see that the, the mean EPG decreases after one treatment. It, uh, it already decreases significantly and then uh, it further decreases if you, if you add the, or if you give additional treatments and it, it's more or less steady and increases again if you then give no further treatments leading to uh, an intensity reduction rate of 83% in the standard treatment group compared to 95% in the intense treatment group. So then we added also the POC CCA data. And here you can see uh, the, the, the quantification of the POC CCA data, that there is also a reduction in, uh, in CCA levels in these children. And that there is also, there seems to be a difference between giving one or uh, four treatments leading to a reduction rate of 54% in the standard treatment group uh, and 63% in the, in, in the intense treatment group. Then if we look at CAA levels in urine, we also see here there is a steep decrease uh, in CAA levels already after the first treatment in both groups. And actually it, from this graph, it appears that even if you give additional treatments, uh, CAA levels do not further decrease much more compared to those who did not receive additional treatments, um, resulting in, in a similar uh, reduction rate for both groups, 89% in the standard treatment group and 93% in the intense treatment group. And then lastly, the stool PCR data. Um, here again, uh, a decrease after the first treatment and a further decrease uh, if, you, uh, if you give additional treatments um, leading to a reduction rate of 83% in the standard treatment group and the intent was 99%. So just to, to give you a quick uh, summary uh, of these data because it's, it's, it's quite a lot of data and quite a lot of conclusions you can draw from this. Um, but basically first we've shown that um, using traditional catacuts, we can, uh, we, we observed a similar cure rate to what's been, um, published previously and also that we could improve the cure rate by, uh, additional treatments. However, if we use the more sensitive, uh, POC CCA or CAA, uh, and, and PCR methods, we can actually confirm that the, that the cure rates are overestimated so that the cure rates are much lower compared to what you measure with microscopy. Um, and then looking at the intensity of infection, we can see that in, in all three uh, markers, so the schistosomal X, uh, antigens, as well as DNA, there is a rapid decrease to very low levels already after the first treatment. Um, and then based on X, you can see a rapid reestablishment of infection after the first treatment. And also, there's a surprisingly small difference between one and four treatments, if you look at specifically at CCA and CAA. Um, and then uh, I think for all tests, we can see that even after four treatments, there is no full clearance of infection. 
So this uh, here, here is a list of some potential reasons for this limited efficacy. And I think Jessica also discussed already a little bit about it. Um, you could question, is the drug really taken? And I think in our trial, um, we did observe treatment and uh, the phys study physician, as well as the nurses, really made sure that the children took the treatment. Um, so we had uh, uh, more than 95% uh, compliance rate. So that that should not be the case. But perhaps the juveniles that were not affected, they um, they become adults, they can they can start producing eggs or excrete antigens. Um, and there is also some other reasons listed here and also extensively discussed uh, in our uh, first paper on the Katukats and Pox ECA results. So I won't, won't go into detail here because of time. So conclusions from this study, um, uh, in particular, if you look on, uh, if you look at egg detection methods, so that uh, that involves cuts and PCR, we can see that there is a uh, the cure rate increases if you repeat the treatment, um, and also you can see there's the, the difference between uh, giving one or four treatments is really significant, um, and also there is a, a big impact on the intensity of infection. Then if you look at worm detection method, so, so uh, another uh, aspect of the, of the uh, cycle, looking at the POC CCA and the CAA analysis, uh, you can see, we, we see, we see that there is a poor cure rate in both groups. And actually there's no difference if you give one or two treatments. This does not seem to affect the cure rate. However, we, we did see an, uh, a really good impact on the intensity of infection. So, and to conclude is that these findings really highlight the need uh, for, for more research to, uh, to reliable and more accurate diagnostic methods to uh, really accurately determine the prevalence and also um, to answer the question is, is M MDA really needed uh, or should we uh, do something different or should we um, do it at different time intervals and also to uh, accurately quantify the intensity of the infection. And lastly, also very important to, to you, you need accurate diagnostic tools to monitor and evaluate treatment efficacy. And with that, uh, I would like to thank all of our, my colleagues at LUMC, but also at Swiss DPH who contributed to the study and uh, our colleagues in Cote d'Ivoire who performed the study and also the funders. And also I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.